after studying this module you should be able to understand the potentiometric method to determine the stability constants based on the measurement of pH. Understand how the pH of the solution is directly affected by complex formation. Employ the observed pH changes to determine the stability constant of the metal complex by using the Jerome's method and identify the equations for the calculation of average ligand number and stability constants of the metal ligand complexes. Let us start with potentiometry based on the pH measurements. A number of techniques are now known for the determination of stepwise stability constants of metal ligand complexes. One of the most accurate, common and simple method for the determination of stability constants of metal ligand complexes is based on the potentiometric measurement of hydrogen ion concentration. The pH of the solution changes as a consequence of complex formation reactions due to the displacement of the proton from the weakly acidic ligands. This change in pH may be monitored by using a glass electrode. Suitable equations can then be employed to determine the stability constant of the metal complexes by using the Jerome's method. Let us discuss about methods based on measurement of pH. In cases where the ligands used are basic in nature and they get protonated in the pH range studded, the methods based on pH measurement become more applicable for the determination of stability constants. These methods are less time consuming and are more economical. The basis of these methods is that during the complex formation between the metal and the protonated ligand, protons are liberated as shown in the equation. The metal combines with the protonated form of the ligand, displaces the proton to form the metal ligand complex and H plus ions are liberated. By determination of the hydrogen ion concentration, the degree of complex formation can be calculated. The ligand, here a weak acid or a protonated base, is titrated potentiometrically with a standard solution of a base in the presence of an inert electrolyte of suitable concentration to maintain the ionic strength of the solution. Then a pH versus concentration of the base curve is plotted. A solution of similar composition to the one just described but containing metal ions in addition is titrated similarly and the titration curve is plotted. If the complex formation occurs extensively in the pH range 3 to 10 and the total concentration of the ligand Cl is not much greater than the concentration of the metal Cm, then there is an appreciable difference between the two curves which are obtained. If the protonation constant of the ligands are known, then by using the values of the coordinates on the curve, we can calculate the stability constants. Where the protonation constants are not known, they can be determined from the data of the first titration curve. If the ligand is a weak dibasic acid represented by H2L and the metal ion is a bivalent metal ion represented as M2 plus and the concentration of the ligand is high enough to form a complex with maximum number of ligands. That is the concentration of H2L is much greater than n times the concentration of the metal. Then the following equations hold for the solution titrated with say potassium hydroxide as the base. We have a charge balance equation as shown 
where the positively charged species are potassium ions, hydrogen ions and the metal ions and the negatively charged species are the hydroxide ions, the ligand in the form of L2 minus and the total concentration of the metal. The total concentration of the metal is equivalent to the amount of counter ligand in the titration. The first term on the right hand side represents the concentration of the anions introduced with the metal and is stoichiometric with the metal ion. We can similarly write down a mass balance equation. The mass balance equation can be represented as follows. We can also write down an equation where the total concentration of the ligand CH2L is equivalent to all different forms in which the ligand is present in solution as depicted by the equation. Putting the values of Cm and L2 minus from the mass balance equation into the charge balance equation, we get a new resultant equation as shown. Rewriting the HL minus and H2L in terms of the protonation constants and concentration of H plus ions and L2 minus ions, we get the following resultant equation. Taking into consideration that during the titration, the concentration of the potassium ions is equal to A times the concentration of the H2L ligand. The free ligand concentration can be expressed in the form of this equation. If the ligand is an acid containing m protons, a form a new general equation can be then developed. These equations are used for the calculation of free ligand concentration from H plus ions and OH minus ions at different degrees of neutralization. If the value of concentration of HML, K1, K2 and so on are already known. The average ligand number for the free ligand concentration L can then be calculated by using the equation for n bar as shown from the corresponding values of n bar and free ligand concentration from the titration curve, the formation curve can be constructed and the stability constants can be calculated. If the degree of neutralization of the acidic ligand at any given pH is donated by A0 and in the presence of metal ions is denoted by A, then the concentration of the bound ligand is given by A minus A0 into the concentration of HL and the average ligand number can then be calculated using the following equation. The free ligand concentration can also be calculated from this equation by the rearrangement of the previous equation. If the conditions for the applicability of the method are fulfilled, that is the species HL and L are dominant in the range of neutralization studied, then the denominator will be given by alpha LH which is going to be equivalent to or almost equivalent to 1 plus concentration of H plus into K1. This equation holds true even for polybasic acids. Let us now look at the calculation of stability constants from related pairs of L and N bar. Consider the case where only one complex species is formed having a 1 is to 1 composition. In this case, the concentration of ML divided by the total concentration of the metal is equivalent to N bar or the concentration of the free metal ion divided by the total concentration of the metal is equal to 1 minus N bar. The stability constants can then be defined by using the following equation. On plotting the logarithm of n bar over 1 minus n bar against log L, we get a straight line. The intercept of this line is equivalent to log k. The calculation is more complicated if n is greater than 1. The complex formation function gives a relationship between the average ligand number, the free ligand concentration and the stability constants. By rearranging the equation for the complex function, 
dealt with earlier, we can write a new equation of the form from equation given from n related L and n bar values can be calculated and the various beta values can also be calculated. One simple graphical method that can be used is the Jerome's half value point method. It states that if the logarithm of successive stability constants is greater than 2.8, then the n bar versus log L curve obtained by experiment has an inflection point where n bar is an integer. Rearranging the equation 12 and substituting a value of n bar is equal to 0 0.5 in the equation, we obtain that log k 1 is equivalent to p L using the generalized formula for n bar earlier as shown in the equation here and substituting a value of i is equal to 2 we can obtain n bar as follows. Rearranging and taking the logarithm on both the sides, we obtain the new equation. Substituting a value of n bar is equivalent to 1.5 in the equation, we obtain log k 2 is equal to p L. It means that if we plot a graph between n bar and p L, then the corresponding values of p L at n bar equivalent to 0.5 and 1.5 give log k1 and k2 respectively. Let us look at a worked example. Determination of stability constants of the sulfosalicylate copper 2 complex. 250 ml solutions are prepared. Solution 1 has 5 ml of 0.1 molar sulfosalicylic acid, 20 ml of 0.2 molar sodium chloride and 25 ml of water. Solution 2 has 2 has 5 ml of 0.1 molar sulfosalicylic acid, 20 ml of 0.2 molar sodium chloride and 10 ml of 0.01 molar copper chloride along with 15 ml of water. Both the solutions are titrated potentiometrically with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. The titration curves obtained are shown in the figure. From the titration curves, the stability constants can be calculated. As the first and second protonation constants of the sulfosilate ligand differ by 9 orders of magnitude, the calculation can be done by Kelvin and Melchior's method. The horizontal distances that is the difference in consumption of standard solution between the titration curves obtained in the absence and in the presence of copper 2 are determined. The concentration of the bound ligand, the average ligand number and the corresponding free ligand concentration can be obtained using the following equations. The total concentration of sulfosalicylic acid and copper are calculated by taking the solution volumes as 59 ml corresponding to the consumption of 9 ml of the titrant. The calculations can be made as follows. The pH difference in the standard solution consumption read directly from the titration curve and the calculated bound ligand n bar and free ligand concentration are summarized in the table. The formation curve constructed from n bar and log L is shown in the figure. The approximate stability constants read from one curve according to the Jerome's half value point method are log k 1 is equal to 9.5 and log k 2 is equal to 6.6. .6. Let us now summarize what we have learnt. One of the most accurate common and simple methods for the determination of stability constants for the metal ligand complex is based on the potentiometric measurement of hydrogen ion concentration. The pH of the solution changes as a consequence of complex formation reactions due to the displacement of the proton from the weakly acidic ligands. The ligand is then titrated with the standard solution of a base in the presence of an inert electrolyte of suitable concentration using a glass electrode. A pH versus the base concentration curve is then plotted. A similar titration is performed with the solution of the same composition but containing additional metal ions and a similar titration curve is plotted. 
if the ligand is a weak dibasic acid H2L and the metal ion is a bivalent ion M2 plus, the free ligand concentration can be expressed by the following equation. The average ligand number can then be calculated using this equation where n bar stands for the average ligand number. From the corresponding values of n bar and L from the titration curve, the formation curve can be constructed and the stability constants can be calculated. If only the species HL and L are present in the solution and there is an appreciable shift of the titration curve in the pH range 5 to 9 in the presence of the metal ion, the concentration of the bound ligand can be obtained directly from the graph by the Kelvin and Melchior's method. The free ligand concentration can also be calculated using this equation. For a 1 is to 1 complex on plotting log n bar versus 1 by n bar against the log L, we get a straight line the intercept of which is log k. Jerome's half value point method can be easily used to obtain the stability constants. If we plot a graph between n bar and p l, then the corresponding values of p l at n bar equal to 0 0.5 and 1.5 give log k 1 and log k 2 respectively.